It's mid-April and I've arrived in a high section of mountains ready to film my 100th video among some big peaks. But instead, I met with all this. Ugly signs, ugly barbed wire, ugly plastic. Here I learned that it's okay to flatten a patch of wild for a pay and display car park and a coffee shop, but it's not okay to responsibly pitch a tiny tent for the night. So. I got back in my car and took myself off to a rugged little pocket of wilderness that feels truly wild, free and happy! I'm here in the Rinog Mountains, late in the day, with no plan but an impending sense of adventure. This is three nights alone in the wild. I am heading up to a lake up there, the Inmawinion, I think it's called. We're gonna set up camp there. It's half six already. I've got less than two hours before the sun sets because today has been all kinds of crazy. I can't believe I'm only just getting here and starting out, but I think it'll be okay. This is a little bit rough going, it's a bit boggy and squelchy but I've got me trusty trekking pole this is the Rinogs after all that's the fun of it right let's get up to this lake and have a little rest and make a plan because I don't have a plan I don't know what I'm doing Ugh. not just in life ah! oh. so I think we're heading up here around this rocky outcrop up to the lake Let's try that. I hate that I didn't have a paper map today because I wasn't planning on coming here. Oh, I've got the map on my phone. Thankfully, I do know the Rinogs very well because it's like a spiritual home for me. I love it here. You gotta be so careful here where you stand. Look, just holes everywhere. So I've come round that big rock face and we're heading up there now and that's where our lake is. I'll see you up there. Oh. Okay. Tick check. There it is. Ain't it beautiful? Made it. A bit soggy here so I'm gonna have a little scramble around there and check out the other side and we'll find somewhere to pitch How's that for a pitch? So I've got my little MSR Hubber NX today, which is a little bit controversial because it broke last time I used it over a year ago in high winds. The pole snapped in two places. My tent's just collapsed. Oh dear. And MSR have replaced the pole, so should be okay tonight. I'm not expecting much wind, so... Yeah, I think let's have it there. <sighs> okay, tents up, I've got water. Let's get in here and get cozy and warm. Right, I am all set up. It is three degrees already. It's just starting to get dark. This is not at all where I was planning to be today, but I'm happy. This is so beautiful here. I mean, what a gorgeous pitch. I've got this whole place all to myself. And it's really special actually, because 
The Rinox is where I came to do my first ever multi-night trip two years ago, pretty much exactly actually because it was April. So what better place to come and do my 100th video? It's not going to be as high and it's gorgeous. I mean, I couldn't have beaten this for a pitch today. Tonight's tea is cheese, leek and ham pasta. I've just had some jerky. I've only come 1.7 kilometers today, which is barely anything, but I arrived so late. And to be honest, I'm just glad to be here. I wasn't sure if I'd make it up to this lake because although it's not a great deal of distance, it's hard going, scrambly, crazy rhinoxenus. So yeah, oh my God, look, it's freezing already. It's gonna be cold tonight, but I think it's gonna warm up after that. So this will be the cold night and then I think tomorrow will be warmer. We shall see. It's kind of nice actually, having no plans. Just do whatever I feel like. I think I might head up towards Renolfak because I've never been over that direction. Uh, he's a 712 meter peak. So maybe we'll have a look around that way. The world is our oyster. It's such a beautiful night tonight. It's so still, there's not a whisper. And the stars are incredible. I'm gonna have my hot drink and then I'm gonna get to bed and I'll see you guys in the morning for an adventure up Renault Fac. Bye. morning it is the most beautiful morning it's still and cold it's minus 0.8 at the moment the lake's like a mirror and there's these beautiful geese they're scooting around everywhere and they woke me up really early this morning so i've not had much sleep because i was awake really late last night and it's so magical just watching the sun it's not come up over that rise yet but watching it light up all over there so I've been thinking about today and I think I'm going to head south in that direction back onto the path that will lead us around to Rinofrag. I don't know if it's possible but looking at the map on my phone it looks like it is so we'll give it a go have a little adventure over that direction. I've got two pastries in here. I've got a squash pan of chocolate and a squash chocolate twist. I have the chocolate twist. Mm. Look, the sun has just come over. Good morning, sunshine. given that 10 minutes in the sun it's pretty much dry already it's all right isn't it thank you camping place we are leaving the lake now heading up towards the sun through that big gap in the rock the warmth from the sun is beautiful after that cold night and you know i haven't seen another person since i got here gorgeous solitude right let's go <laughs> I guess we're going over that wall then. Yes. We're over. Goodbye, leg. Hey, we're up. So we've just left the lake down there, and the path we want to be on is down there, and that is Rinal Fowl. And we're heading that way south towards the Rinog Fack. We're back on the path now. This is the top of the Roman steps. We're heading down there.
so wet. It's gone right over on my butt. Oh look, Rinox mountain goats. Oh, they're gorgeous. Right, we are now heading round to the valley between Rinog Bower and Rinog Fack. Here we are. You can see both of them now. Rinog Fack, Rinog Bower. And we're going to see if we can get up Rinog Fack. We'll see how we do anyway. Lovely big old bog there. It is 11 o'clock. We've walked five kilometers this morning and I am here at the start of the path up to Rinogfak. I was here a couple of years ago looking up here and I didn't feel confident enough to even try it. So two years later, I feel fine giving it a go. I don't know if we'll go to the summit, but We'll just have a wander about and see where we end up. So yeah, this is where the fun starts, I guess. So we're starting up here at 317 meters, thereabouts. And the summit is 712, I think. So really, we're already halfway up. That's not bad, is it? Oh, look, it's like a little pond. I wonder if they're the same geese from earlier. And they're like, wow, can't get away from this human. Okay, let's push on and I might see if we can get to the next lake for lunch. We'll stop up there. Oh, mud. 400 meters. 500. Look at this. Ain't it beautiful? That's all right for a lunch spot, isn't it? I'm gonna stop here, have some lunch, chill out for a bit, let my boots dry. Turn off back up there. The water is fresh. been here over two hours now. I love it. It's so peaceful. I've had my lunch and I put my stuff out to dry in the sun, which has gone in now. It's gone a bit chilly again. It's beautiful when the sun comes out and then it's pretty arctic when it goes in. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and head up Rinok Vak. Give it a go. See what happens. gonna see if I can head across the bottom of that rockfall there, up to the saddle and then up to the summit. I don't like it when they move. <laughs> rockfall done, now we're going up. I'm gonna make some elevation now. Let's go. Six hundred meters, or thereabouts, and <laughs> I'm feeling a bit icky. My fear of heights. I'm not liking it now. I feel like I want to be really close to the ground so they can't fall and stuff. So I'm gonna scoot back down. If that's fine. I don't like to sort of make myself feel ill with the fear of heights thing. So yeah, it's beautiful up here. 
You can see the sea. It's pretty breezy as well. Oh yeah. It's fun going down looking at it. Back down at the lake, done the boulders. I feel much happier down here and it's so lovely and warm. I'm gonna head down to that tiny widgy little lake. I'll see you down there. <gasps> here we are. It is four o'clock. I found a perfect little pitch over there that I'm gonna put the tent on later. It's too early at the moment. Yeah, this is really gorgeous. So I'm just gonna chill out, dry some stuff, charge some stuff. Just generally living my best life. cold dip of the year. I love being out here. This little trip is turning out to be a proper little treat. in around for now. Let's get this tent up. We found a perfect little cooking rock. I am all set up. I'm all cozy. I've had a good tick check and a freshen up and I feel so relaxed this evening. It's so lovely. Nice and chill. Wind's getting up a little bit, there's a little gust comes through now and again, nothing too crazy. So today we've travelled 8.9 kilometres, so that's 10.6 total I think. Yeah, it's been a really, really fun day. I have to say, carrying the lighter stuff that I bought on this trip has been an absolute dream compared to the heavy winter gear. It's been so nice, so much more manageable. And I can't tell you how nice it feels to have some nice weather it almost felt like cheating today, putting the tent up in dry, mild conditions. It just feels like we had a really long, wet winter. And it's been an amazing today to get some sunshine as well and to get some mountain water on me. That laces are busted up again. This has happened to me like three times now. Ooh. So, always bring a spare pair. So, I think tomorrow. I'm gonna head back down and we'll have kind of a woodsy mountain water stream kind of day tomorrow, I think. I think I'm gonna camp down low in the woods as well. So yeah, we'll just see what takes our fancy. Got my hot chocolate on the go and some sea salt dark chocolate tonight. Little treat. And I'll get to bed guys, gonna have an early night tonight because I didn't get much sleep last night, so. Morning. Hi. Good morning. It is a little bit rainy this morning and a little bit windy. It's lovely to sit in a tent, have my breakfast, all cozy. I just hate packing away in the rain, but this bit's really nice. I've got chocolate coffee and a three day old flattened pan of chocolate. <laughs> That's still gonna be really delicious. I love bringing pastries out because they still taste nice a few days later. I think my geese friends are back. Oh, it's just one today. Where's your friend? Hmm. Where the other one is? That's the other one. Look at them having fun. Whee! 
so it's eight degrees this morning really warm and i slept for eight or nine hours which is amazing i had such a good sleep i was out like a light last night and i feel lovely and refreshed and relaxed this morning so i'm gonna have my breakfast and then we'll get going for a foresty day today <laughs> slippery and I don't fancy sliding down there if I butt slide some of this oh I'd be glad to be down off this bit okay I've nearly done it we're down a little bit dry mouth doing that <laughs> okay right we're going that way. I will see you at the forest in a few kilometers. Just passing through this bit of forest feels a bit prehistoric -y. I'm looking for somewhere to have lunch that's a little bit sheltered out of the weather, which it is in here, but I need some water. Right, let's look for a little stream for some lunch. It is so beautiful in here. It's so fresh and green and gorgeous. I love evergreens. And there's a little stream down here. So I think what I'm gonna do is try and follow that in there a little way, find a bit of shelter and we'll stop for lunch. This is a perfect little lunch spot, right by that stream, sheltered in the trees. I love it in this forest. I can't believe I've never been in here before properly. And even though it's rainy today, it's a lovely light, refreshing rain. We're at a little crossroads here. You can either go straight on that way or up that cute little path up there. So I think I'm gonna head up there. I'm gonna make the most of this forest and then we'll come out, go over the Roman steps and down into another little forest on the other side. Let's do it. Wow, look at that, you can't see anything, half in the cloud. So this way is going to take us to the waterfall that we passed on the way in and then it's the Roman step. Roman steps and I'm coming back down now can't see anything today so I will see you guys down there in the beautiful little forest wow hey look another one hey dude you want to be added to my skull collection cool Ah, little flat bit. 
Yay! This will do. Right by that waterfall as well. Oh, it's perfect. It feels so atmospheric in this little forest in the fog. You can hardly see that waterfall now. So it is currently a nice mild 10 degrees and today we have walked 7.8 kilometers, I think. Yes, 7.8. So that brings the total for this trip to around about 18 and a half kilometers. This has been one of my favorite trips for a little while actually. Had some pretty tough ones over winter and this has been such a treat. It's been warmer. My rucksack has been considerably lighter. I've had mountains, forests, I've been in the water, I've had sunshine, some relaxing rain. It's just had everything I could want in a little trip in the wilds. I love this place. And I really hope that no big organisations try and claim it and build car parks and coffee shops and cafes and stuff on it. Because that would be a travesty. I'm going to try and get an early night tonight. Just relax. Make the most of my last little bit of time here. This trip got me thinking about the growing disconnect between humanity and nature. Not just that we don't spend enough time in nature anymore, but that we seem to be encouraged to think of humans and nature as being two different things. Separate. Hey, friends. But actually, I don't believe that we are. We are nature too. Thank you, camping place. For those of us who are called back to the wild places, those of us that maybe feel we weren't supposed to be born into industrial revolutions and technology. You'll never believe who I just ran into on the way out. It's never been more important to hold on to our connections with nature and our ancestors with both hands and never let it go. Now, I can't speak for everyone, of course, and I certainly don't speak for a very small minority of selfish idiots who disrespect the wild places, but if only for a short time out of the modern life that I was born into, I am a part of this natural world, and I intend to keep it that way. Being out here, it's not just something that I do, it's in me. It's a part of who I am. So to the vast majority of respectful, nature-loving wild campers out there who pass through quietly, stop and listen and feel yourselves once again becoming a part of this, if only briefly, I hope that you'll never feel guilty for wanting to spend time where you belong.